In this video, we will look at an important concept in object-oriented programming, which is inheritance. To understand the concept of inheritance, let's look at an example. In this example, I'm creating a university system where I'm keeping track of um, people who are part of my university. So for example, I want to keep track of my students and I want to keep track of the faculty that work in that um, university. For each student, I will be um, recording the social security number, the name, the year of birth, and the um, GPA for that student. And for each one of these instance variables, I created a getter and a setter. So I created a class to keep track of my students. And for each student, I want to keep track of these four um, fields or four pieces of information. Same thing for my faculty. I want to keep track of their social security number, their names, their year of birth, and the salary. And for each one of these instance variables, I created a getter and setter. Now, if we pay close attention to our classes, we'll see that we have a lot in common between the student and faculty. We have these three instance variables that are um, in both the faculty and the students, which are the social security number, the name, and the year of birth. And you'll so also see that we have also the methods that are associated with these variables available in both classes. So we have six methods that are in common between the faculty and student. So the idea of inheritance, we want to increase the reusability of our code. So instead of rewriting the same variables in both classes and the same methods in both classes, we want to have a general class that will have all the things that they have in common. And these two classes can inherit or reuse the code that is available in that super class or general class. So I can create a person class because both my students and faculty are persons. And in the person class, I can keep track of the social security number, the name and the year of birth, and all the functionality that applies to my people or to the persons who live or work at that university. Now, each student will have all these information and each faculty will also have all that information and functionality. If there is anything specific to the student that does not fall to any general person, we will add it to the student class. So the GPA only applies to my students, it does not apply to the faculty. So in that case, in my subclass or the child class, we will add that variable GPA. And any methods and functionality that applies only to students will be added in here. Same thing for the faculty, the salary applies only to the faculty, it does not apply to my students. So I will be adding the salary instance variable and any methods that are only available for that faculty. So the big advantage of inheritance is we can um, write the code that is common in multiple classes once and reuse it in as many subclasses as we want. So the person is called a super class or a parent class and the student faculty, we call them subclasses or children classes. Now, if we want to add more people to our or more types of people into our university, for example, staff, donors, they all fall under the category person so they can also inherit these uh, methods and variables in the person class. So let's see how we can implement this using Java. I'm going to create a new Java project and uh, let's call it university. And I'm going to create a new class. And this is my parent class that I want to create, which is person. I'll put it in a package here, um, university, for example, .com. and then we will create a class called person. You'll see we have the general format, public class and person, and then we can start creating our instance variables. So I'm gonna create private um, social security number, which is an integer. I will create a private string, which is the name, private uh, integer year of birth, and for each one of them, I'll create a getter and setter. I'll just use the source, generate getters and setters, and I'll select all my instance variables and click on generate. Now, this is my parent class. It has the three instance variables that we have in common and all the functionality or methods that we have in common um, between all the subclasses. Next, I'll create my first subclass, which is the student class. So I'm gonna create a new class and I'm gonna call that class student. I'll click on finish. And to indicate that this student class is inheriting from the person class, I will add a keyword after the um, class name, which is extends 
and followed by the name of the par parent class, which is person. So extends tells Java that this student class will extend the functionality of the person class or it will inherit from the person class. The only instance variable that I need in the student class is the GPA. So private double GPA. And I can generate the getter and setter for that GPA. So I will select the GPA and generate the getter and setter. I will create my second subclass, which is the faculty class. So new class, I'll call it faculty. And then I will do the same thing. It will extend. So extends. that person class and then I will add the instance variable that's only available for the faculty which is the double salary so private double salary I will generate the getter and setter for that instance variable and now I have the two subclasses faculty and student so let's test these classes. I'm going to create a new class, which is my main class, which will have the main method. So I'll call it main class. And I will check the public static void main, so it will add it for me instead of me typing it. So in my main class, I want to create objects of my students and faculty. So to create an object of the student, I will use the data type student, the class name, followed by the instance variable or the um, object reference sc one equals new student. Since I did not create any constructors in my student class, I will just use the default constructor. Now, if I want to set the name of the student, now, notice we do not have a variable here called name, or we do not have a method here that allows me to set the name. However, it is available in the parent class set name. So since I'm creating an object of the student, which is inheriting from the person class, I will have access to the method set name. So if I go stu1 dot, you'll see that I have access to the set name, which is not technically um, a, something we actually implemented in the student class, but it was available in the parent class person. So I will set the name for that student and we gave it the name Mike. Same thing if I wanted to create a faculty object. So faculty, and let's call him teacher equals new faculty. Again, we did not create any constructor, so we'll just use the default constructor. And then we want to say teacher.setName will have also access to the name method. So both my student object and my faculty object will have the access to all the things that are available in the person. However, only the student object will have access to the GPA. So stu1.getGPA is only available for the student. So getGPA and setGPA are only available for the student object. So if I want to set the GPA to be 3.5, that's something I can only do for my students. I cannot do the same thing for my faculty. So if I try to go to teacher.setGPA, I will not be able to find a method called setGPA. Now let's create a constructor for my student class. The constructor will allow me to set all these instance variables um, at the time we are creating the object of the student class. So the constructor will be public, will have the same name as the class name, which is student, and we want to set all the um, information for that student. So we want to set the name, so string name, for example, the integer social security, the integer year of birth and the double value that represents the GPA. Now you will notice if you try to set the instance variable name, you will not have access to the variable name that is available in the parent class. If I try to say this dot name, I do not have access to that variable. Why? Because that name was actually a private value. So private instance variable or private variables in the class 
they are only available or accessible inside the class. Although the student class is inheriting from that person class, these variables are private, so we do not have direct access to them. The only way we can access the name is using the getter or setter. If I want to provide access to, the, to these variables in my inheritant or the class that is inheriting from the person class, I can change the data or the access modifier to be protected instead of private. So if I make it protected and save it, you'll see now I will have access to that name. So this.name, I will have access to that variable. Now, the best way to handle constructors is actually to create a constructor in the person class. So in the person class, since we want to allow code reusability, I can create a constructor here. So public person. And this one will allow me to set the social security number, so integer SSN, the name, which is a string, and the year of birth, which is an integer. And inside here, I will set this.ssn to be equal to SSN. This dot name will be equal to the name. And this dot year of birth will be equal to the year of birth that we are sending to that constructor. I will change back my name, the string name, to be private. And now in my student class, if I want to access the parent constructor, which will allow me to set the name, the social security, and the year of birth, so instead of me individually going to set these values, I can call the parent constructor and let the parent constructor set these instance variables in the parent class. So to do that, I will be using the keyword super instead of this. So super will allow me to access the parent class, and when we use parentheses, we are calling the super constructor. So I want to pass to the super constructor, which is accepting an integer, the social security, followed by the name, followed by the year of birth. So SSM, comma, name, comma, year of birth. And that will set the instance variables in that super class. I am only left with the GPA that I need to set in here because it's only available inside my subclass or the child class. So this dot GPA, and I will set it to the GPA value that I sent from the um, into the constructor. Now, one thing that is really important to remember is once you provide a constructor in your class, Java will not provide you with the default constructor anymore. So if you go check the faculty, it will tell you that the um, super constructor is undefined. So we do not have a super constructor in the person class. So we are not able to use the default constructor in here. Because by default, when we have a default constructor, it will automatically call the default constructor in the parent class. So we need to implement at least a constructor here that is calling the um, other constructor in the parent class. So I will create another constructor here for my faculty. So public faculty. And then this faculty will be getting the name, string name, um, integer SSN, and then integer year of birth, and then finally double, which is the salary. And inside here, I will call the parent constructor, which is super. It The parent constructor takes the social security first, followed by the name, followed by the year of birth. And then I'm only left to set the salary. So this dot salary is equal to the salary that we have in here. And now once I save it, you will see I do not have an error in this class. Now, if we go back to our main class, we'll see that we have an error in the student and the faculty because we already implemented one um, constructor. So the default constructor is not available anymore. So my student constructor will be taking the name. So Sam, for example, followed by the social security number, followed by the year of birth, and then followed by the, um, the GPA. So that's the constructor for the student. I don't want to set the name anymore. And then for the faculty, I can pass the name followed by the social security, followed by the year of birth, and then followed by the salary, whatever that is. Now, if we want to add a default constructor in our classes, 
for example, for the student, I can add that default constructor. So public student that does not take any parameters. You will see I will still need to call the parent constructor. So I have a problem here that says implicit constructor person is undefined. So I need to call the default constructor in the person and that is done automatically in the default constructor of the student. So even if I did not call it, it will try to call the default constructor in the person class. And if I didn't have a cons default constructor in the person class, I will have an error. So I need to implement the default constructor in my person class. So in here, I will create it public person. And we can actually set some dummy values. So this dot SSN, we can assign it to zero, zero. Uh, that's a value. So if we give it zero, it will still be the same. Um, the name, this.name, we can assign it uh, no name, for example. And then the, this dot year of birth, we can assign it to be, um, for example, 1900. Now you will see that once I save it, if I go back to the student class, I will not have a problem. So what is happening in the student default constructor by default, it's going to call the default constructor in the person class. So if you want to write it specifically, you can add super with empty parentheses, and that will do the same thing. So whether you add this line or not, this line will be implicitly added to your default um, constructor. We can also set the GPA here if we want, so to a default value. So GPA, this to GPA equals um, 2.0, for example. Now, if I go to the faculty and try to generate the constructor using the source here, so generate constructors using fields, and let's leave this empty, generate, you will see by default, Eclipse add the super empty parentheses, which is calling the default constructor in the parent class 